Well, welcome back again this week. You know, for the last couple of segments at this time, I have uh, talked about the fact that if you choose sides between the Ukraine or Russia or Crimea or whatever, uh, you lose. You choose, you lose. That it's all show business towards building a new world order. Don't forget, too, that the British kind of got their tail uh, chopped off when there was the war in Crimea, uh, you know, about a century ago. It doesn't, uh, it's not a good thing to be involved in that area. Actually, it was over a century ago, obviously. But let me give you a demonstration of some of the things that are going on visually that you may not have seen in your newspapers or even on Fox or CBS or CNN or any of those areas. Here, for instance, is a demonstration uh, out in front of the uh, uh, Samforopol, Ukraine. Now, keep in mind, this is outside the the Russian-held port. And you see that you have Russian flags and the hammer and sickle. Uh, These are the people down there uh, demonstrating, uh, and in this case, they're demonstrating uh, 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 last March 16th and uh, for the, the Ukraine government. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this one, uh, this one's in Lenin Square, uh, supposedly, except when you look at where they say the location was, it says as well it was the Ukraine, and you see the hammer and sickle. Uh, here's a, a Russian Crimea demonstration. And these have Russian and Ukrainian flags uh, in their march to uh, support getting back with, with, uh, with Moscow and the Crimea. Now, this particular location, by the way, is in Russia. So they have the Ukrainian flag, they have the, the Crimean flag, and the hammer and sickle. Uh, here is a, a, a demonstration, and this one's in Odessa. Ukraine, and here they have a flag showing a picture of Stalin and various hammer and sickle flags. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the Ukraine or the Crimea or in Moscow, this hammer and sickle keeps showing up. Here is a march of a Ukrainian regiment in support of Ukrainian autonomy, and you'll see that the regimental flag is the hammer and sickle. So what we're trying to say is this, is that no matter what side you take, whether you take Russia's side, the Ukrainian side, the Crimean side, or what appears to be three or two different sides, you're going to lose. Because all of these people harken back to the communist basis for their existing governments. And the individuals who are involved, this side, that side, they're all communists. You know, we have this idea that communism is always autonomous, but it isn't always. These men and women fight each other for the leadership, and the pawns in the streets are involved. We want this leader, we want that leader, and anyone you choose, you lose. It's sort of like deciding, do I want to be ruled by Hitler, or do I want to be ruled by Stalin? Choose, you lose. And by the way, The recent uh, election in the Ukraine had a 90-plus referendum saying they want to join Russia. Well, 90-plus referendums remind us of communist elections. They remind us of the election that Hitler had when he said, do you want me as your leader or not? And that was the ballot referendum. And you had, on the ballot, it said, yeah. Yes. Didn't say no. So when you cast your ballot, it was yes. And it was a 98% that yes, the German people want Adolf Hitler as their Fuhrer. It's reminiscent of that kind of thing in the Ukraine. Now, we know that certain Ukrainian, uh, Crimean subgroups boycotted the, the elections. So only those that went to the polls primarily were those that wanted the separation. Those that were against it, various ethnic groups that were against it, boycotted the elections. Uh, and so you don't really get a good uh, 
good uh, vote as a result of that. Something interesting that I'd like to bring to your attention. You know, once in a while we wonder why the post office is in trouble. And uh, we got a real uh, indication of why that was this past week. See, from time to time, we will actually uh, revoke individuals' membership in the John Birch Society. This is done for a variety of reasons, but usually the reason is racism. In other words, somebody who hates another race and that sort of thing, uh, we just say, you know, you go your own way. Now that we've discovered that this is the way you uh, believe and these are the beliefs you hold, that is not part of the John Birch Society, regardless of what the New York Times or the Southern Poverty Law Center or anybody else says. We don't condone it inside the John Birch Society. We work together to preserve our freedom. So at any rate, we sent this letter revoking this man's uh, membership, and we, the date on the, the letter is December 17th, uh, 2012. Well, we just got this letter back in the mail this week. Now we sent this out, and it's got the postmark of 12-17-2012, 12, 12, uh, and we just got it back this last week from the post office. You know, that's a long time. Is it any wonder that the post office is in trouble? And here's one, by the way, that we sent out uh, in October of 2012, and we got it back again on March 10th, 2014. Uh, you know, we send a lot of mail out, and we get some anomalies once in a while, and these are a couple that came back this last week. But why does it take two years for this one letter to be sent out and returned to us? And as I said, is it any wonder that the uh, post office is in trouble? Uh, here is an article that we posted on the internet uh, over the weekend titled, Obama declares budget cuts don't apply to the Affordable Care Act. Now, what he has done arbitrarily is just to say, or he, the administration, that any sequestral vote uh, to cut the budget of the United States does, will not apply to the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Now, if he can do that, contemplate the ramifications of a balanced budget amendment in that regard. We've been long saying that the balanced budget amendment is not required, and even if it is required, you're still going to have to write about 20 pages in this amendment in order to make it work. You've got to factor in the Federal Reserve. You've got to factor in the fact that there are off-budget items, such as Medicare, Social Security, Freddie uh, Mac and Fannie Mae, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so you're going to have to write it to include all those things. Now you're going to have to write it to make sure that you hamstring the power of the president to arbitrarily come in and alter what is the balanced budget or any budget. Likewise, you're going to have to do it to the Supreme Court. I think I'll end up this segment by reading something that was in a book uh, published that I have in my library in 1873, uh, but the original copyright was uh, 1859. I want to read to you what was taught in the schools in the fifth grade. You might check your own child's fifth grade reading text or what they ask them to read uh, to see if it comes anywhere close to this. This is a demonstration of the, of the general uh, attitude and education and educational level of what was being taught in those years compared to today. It says, the name of, of Republic is inscribed upon the most imp imperishable monuments of, human, of the human race, and it is probable that it will continue to be associated, as it has been in all past ages, with whatever is heroic in character, sublime in genius, and elegant and brilliant in the cultivation of arts and letters. What land has ever been visited with the influence of liberty that has not flourished like the spring? What people has ever worshipped at her altars without kindling with a without kindling with a lofter spirit, a loftier spirit, excuse me, 
and putting forth nobler energies. Wherever she has acted, meaning liberty, her deeds have been heroic. Wherever she has spoken, her eloquence has been triumphant and sublime. And it goes on from there. But you can see the kind of language in the fifth grade. This is a reader for the fifth grade. The kinds of things that they were trying to teach in the way of liberty and love of our country and the love of our system and what great good it's done for our country to be a republic, to be in liberty. That's what used to be taught in the schools in 1859 on through in the 1870s. Check your kids' uh, textbooks in this regard and see what they're reading about as their assignments. Uh, that they bring home. Until next week, we'll see you then.